In our first question, John and Mary are childless, married couple who lived apart um, in alone in separate homes the entire year. On December 31st, 2007, they were legally separated under decree of separate maintenance. Which is the only filing status choice available for the 2007? Basically, they're single. They're not considered to be married under the tax laws. So under that written decree of separate maintenance, living in two separate homes, they are considered to be single for that tax year. Second question, a husband and wife can file a joint return even if, and let's just go through them, the spouses have different tax years provided both spouses are alive at the end of the year. No, they have to have the same tax year. The spouses have different accounting methods. That's okay, so we know that's a good one. Either spouse was a non-resident alien. Nope, that's, that's no good. And they were divorced before the end of the year. No, then they would be single or one of the other filing statuses, but they would not be married. So the answer for that one is B. So it gives you some idea of them, how they take the definitions and lay them on top of kind of a fact pattern to say, okay, which one would qualify, which wouldn't. So in one situation, you've said, here's a fact pattern, what's their filing status? The other one was like, um, basically, if they wanted to file a joint return, what's the definition of who fits and who doesn't? So it's kind of two different directions of looking at the same issue. Let's take a look at one other one. Let's take a minute and read through question number five. Emil Gao died in, in 2005. He did not remarry. He continued to maintain a home for him, himself and his dependent infant child in 2006 and 2007 provides full support. So the question is for the 2007 year, what will be his filing status? Well, for the year of the date of the death, 2005, he would be filing married, filing a joint return with his spouse even though she passed away. Since he has a dependent child and maintains the household, for the next two years, which is 2006 and 2007, he should be filing C, qualifying widower with dependent child. That's the best filing status that he should have. Now, we could also file, just to let you know, he could also file single, but that's not the best filing status. He could also file head of household, but that's not the best filing status. The best one is the third one. And so when you read through those questions, this is what the examiners are focusing in on, not what filing status is available to him, but rather what would be the best filing status, even though it doesn't technically say what is the best. So watch out for those as you go through them. Let's sort of put what we've seen in perspective. If a taxpayer, and things I've mentioned before, the taxpayer has some gross income, and we won't be really looking at gross income until the next chapter, but it has some gross income, some of wages. They're entitled to some deductions for AGI. We'll be talking about this in Chapter 3, and that brings them down to adjust a gross income. If you do see questions with numbers in them in this area, in chapter one type things, they typically follow this type of pattern or start right down here with adjusted gross income. What we're now saying is that given a different filing status, the taxpayer is entitled to either a standard deduction or they can itemize their deductions. We know that for a single taxpayer, the amount is 5,350. So if the taxpayer wants to see if they can itemize their deductions, they would say, do my itemized deductions exceed 5,350 if I'm single? Or if they're married, the standard deduction is 107. Do my itemized deductions exceed 10,700? This is the nature of chapter four when we look at what type of standard deductions do we have. Once you decide which one we get, you then subtract that out, and then you subtract out the exemptions, which is the next topic I'm going to be getting into. And that exemption amount reduces your gross income down to what's called taxable income, and it's upon this that we calculate the tax. So we're going to be pulling out the components of these and spending time on each one of them as we go along. So that's kind of it for giving filing status. There's been some good questions on simulations where they give back patterns comparable to what we've just looked at. But basically, go back, keep those definitions you know, close to you, because you, as you read problems that we start doing in exemptions, they'll start giving you little fact patterns as well. And I'll sort of try to tie those in as well.